evening and right now Jessica Rosales is with Fidel Maldonado all right now a couple changes in tonight's fight as far as your opponent goes what does that do for you as far as your preparations go um, not just physically but mentally as well uh, not really too different he's just a power puncher um, he's tall and lanky we got a guy in our gym Brian Mendoza my little brother my teammate um, he, he helped me out a lot because he's the same size as the guy and long too so he helped me get ready. I had a couple guys, so different sizes, so it don't really matter. Right, and you have said that from experience, you've learned to not take anybody lightly going into tonight's match. What are your expectations, and what do you predict? Well, I just got to watch out for his power, because he, you know, he has power. He has 10 knockouts out of 13 wins, so we go with him, fight smart, and see what happens. All right, thanks so much for the time. Best of luck. Barry, we'll send it back to you. All right, Jessica, thanks very much. So uh, Fidel Maldonado not taking uh, John Natir lightly he does come in here he does have a little bit of pop but he's never done it against the guy the caliber of fidel maldonado we'll see if he can tonight need a car. Hey, welcome you back at cowboys dance hall here in san antonio texas and we turn now to our main event of the evening a guy who returns to the scene of his greatest triumph talking about fidel maldonado jr as he is in our main event against a late starter by the name of john natir we're going 10 rounds in this fight this is our main event of the evening fidel maldonado he had a couple of tough losses one that was a forgivable loss and one where he just simply got tagged and it was that simple now he's come back with four victories one over a trial horse but his most impressive the last one when he scored a knockout against luis ramos jr right here a guy who came in here with a record of 23 and one so he's full of confidence right now paulie yeah that's the kind of win that will get back that confidence he may have lost with the losses with the defeats he took so you know we'll see if he can springboard with that momentum into this fight um, he looks confident here, but you know, he's got Natir in front of him. Natir took the fight on short notice, but he's a guy who will test test you out. Uh, he's, a, he's a good opponent. Uh, he'll uh, test out prospects. The thing about it is, as we said earlier, how in shape is he having taken the fight on short notice? That's the thing that's going to be interesting. He will win the best dressed award, however. He did get that. <laughs> Here's the tail of the tape. Here's how these two match up. And Natir at 23 years old and Fidel Maldonado Jr. only 22 years old. Natir a little bit taller than he is and has a four inch reach advantage. We'll see if he takes advantage and uses that. He told us he was going to come right at him. Here are the rules that govern tonight's fight. They are the unified rules, 10 point must system, no standing gate count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the final round. Only the referee can stop the fight. And the headbutt rule will go to the scorecards after the fourth round. Let's meet him now as we take you once more to the center of the ring and Joe Martinez. Joe. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Cowboys Dance Hall here in the beautiful city of San Antonio, Texas. This is the main event of the evening. 10 rounds of boxing scheduled in the welterweight division. Presented by Golden Boy Promotions and Leja Bata Promotions with our sponsors Corona Extra, La Cerveza Mas Fina, and O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. The three judges scoring this bout at ringside, Ellis Johnson, Ursulo Perez, and Orville Robbins. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, John Shirley. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready and the fighters are ready. San Antonio, make some noise if you are ready! <laughs> Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing tonight red trunks trimmed in black and white, he weighed it officially 142 and one quarter pounds. This young veteran brings a 13 win record with four defeats and 10 wins coming by way of knockout. Hailing from Bayamon, Puerto Rico, here is John Nader. And next is opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing purple and gold, he weighed an officially 141 and three quarter pounds. A veteran of 19 professional fights, he brings 17 victories, two defeats and 14 big wins coming by way of knockout. Hailing from Albuquerque, New Mexico, he is the Atrisco Kid, Fidel Maldonado 
Jr. Once again, referee John Charlie with the final instruction. Okay, right here's a good. Give me a good clean fight. Obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Yo quiero un de pelea limpia. Obedezca mis órdenes y protejanse todo tiempo. Toca guantes bien so with that, we are set to go, and uh, we asked incidentally John Atier how he pronounced his name, and he said John Atier. So that's what we're going with. Comes from Bayamon, Puerto Rico, and and it must be said he has 13 wins. That's a fact, but the combined records of the guys who he's beaten are 15 and 169. Yeah, and that's not so great. That's he not good. He, but uh, early on in his career, he did have a. You know, a close decision loss to Brandon Bennett. Brandon Bennett is a pretty solid uh, prospect out of Ohio. Went to Brandon's hometown, uh, lost the majority or a split there. So, you know, he can test you out if, the, if he's in shape. You know, he's well-schooled, pretty good, you know. We'll see uh, as the rounds progress just where he's at tonight. Yeah, he told us he was training for a fight that was supposed to have taken place on the 21st of February. So this only pushed it up by a couple of weeks for him. Tells us that he's ready. We'll see. We're going to find out. Yeah, body language wise, he looks pretty confident. Yeah. And so does Maldonado. So let's see. Get that lefty righty matchup here. Both guys trying to establish the jab, but it's not always easy when uh, it's a lefty righty matchup as the lead hands clash. It's interesting, there's so many lefties that you find in the amateurs, you get the pros, just not that many. Yeah. You can mix and match your way around them a lot of times in the pros. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you don't have that option in the amateurs. First round, kind of a feeling out round, and both fighters said that's what they were going to do. Some fast hands on both guys. Definitely forces you to think a little more, man. Yeah. You know, you wanna you wanna get aggressive and uh you know show that firepower, but you don't wanna walk into anything you don't see, and that's what a speedy guy will have you doing, he'll have you second guessing a lot of times. So we'll see how they set up their offense. Both guys are attempting to do that right now. Well, and in fact Maldonado had both good news and bad news in that regard because when he got knocked out, that punch he said he never saw. And likewise when he returned the favor against Luis Ramos Jr. in his last fight here in San Antonio. It was his quickness that made the difference. Mm -hmm. Natera, a little bit different style than Ramos. So I'll tell you, Natera is a little, can be a little similar to Steve Forbes, who Maldonado was going to fight tonight. You know, Forbes also quick and speedy, a uh, ring veteran, next world champion. Natera doesn't have that kind of pedigree, but still, nonetheless, stylistically, he's got that speed style. Yeah, that's a very good point. Stevie Forbes would have really been a very good test, I think, for Fidel Maldonado at this juncture in his career. Guy that's been around the track, mm -hmm. want the best. <laughs> Feeling out first round here. We welcome you back. So first round, uh, a little to choose really between these two. Uh, Natera did show some some hand speed, as you pointed out. And, uh, it'll be interesting. See if you can give Maldonado any kind of test. Yeah, yeah. Told us he was going to look to counter, but he expected Maldonado to pressure him. You know what? At times, Maldonado started pressuring, and you saw once or twice in that first round, Maldonado just took some steps back and said, you know what? We're going to do this in the middle of the ring. So. Maybe trying to throw that tear off a little bit. We'll so, see how that works out. Yeah, this is round two. On the outside, a lot of times the faster guy has the advantage, and it seems that tear is the quicker guy. But right now, no, nobody has been able to establish anything offensive solidly. But you'd think Maldonado needs to work his way inside just a little bit, being he may be at a speed deficiency to Natera. Fainting there a little bit, trying to. Get his way inside. Through right hand and left behind it. Not much damage. Maldonado may be slightly slower than Natera, but he's not slow in his own right. So, you know, 
If he can get that timing down, he may be able to time the tear over the top of something. Well, tonight's CompuBox stats are brought to you by ThrowItOnFantasy.com. Draft fighters, track stats, and win. And the first round, as we said, a, a feeling out round. Neither fighter really doing very much. And the second round, not unlike the first so far. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Maldonado wants to be aggressive, but again, he can't be reckless either. So, you know, he gotta, he's got to be patient, and that's what he's doing. At a certain point, though, you know, he's, he's going to look to time over the top of something. Try to come back with that hook if he can tear it through the one, too. Nobody landing anything solid quite yet, though. Well, and I'll just missed that right hand. The jab of the tear, it's not a powerful jab, but it's been effective so far. It's keeping Maldonado off of him. Yeah, and, it, and it shows Maldonado that, you know, you can't, he can't just walk right in. Kind of get past there a little bit. Maybe as the rounds progress, we'll see if Maldonado can get the timing on it. And Natera doing a good job of mixing the speed on that jab, so that ma it makes it more difficult to time it. Solid left hand. Yeah, just stepped in with it. I, I think that got Natera's attention. Certainly the most solid punch of the fight landed from either guy. Knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Young <laughs> yeah. guy, but There's a bit of a mean streak in there. Yeah. Well, whenever they fight, Maldonado gets the best of it. And Maldonado, I think, did enough to win the second round. We're coming back. Hey. Back round three of this ten-round fight. This is our main event here at. Cowboy Dance Hall, Barry Tompkins, Paulie Mal Malinaji, Jessica Rosales telling you about it. A lot of stalking going on right here by... Maldonado, but not much action. You know, better off just cutting off the ring there. A little, you know, he's allowing Natera to turn the corner every time, so Natera goes in circles, tries to flick that jab out, but Maldonado is not cutting him off to kind of force him the other way. Now Maldonado tried to go backwards and have Natera stop. Maldonado just stroking him with left hands here. Now Natera wants to fight. Natera said he was going to see what Maldonado had if he didn't think he could hurt him. He would come after him. Well, that's the Maldonado's kind of fight, though. He wants that aggressive inside kind of fight. I tell you, he's looking for it. And tear back on his legs there. Left hand again. And here's what I mean. If Maldonado can beat Natera, a good left hand there if he doubled it up. As Natera tries to escape, if Maldonado can beat him to the spot, he would force Natera to go the other way and towards his left hand. I missed with that left hand. I felt it. Maldonado, one of those guys, expends a lot of energy with every punch he throws. Well, I think he's getting a little frustrated with uh, the fact that Natera won't engage. He's got to remain calm, but I tell you, he's getting Natera to stand more still. That was a good oh, left hand that dropped Natera. Started with a good body shot. Yeah. And I think Natera is still feeling it. Ties Maldonado up. Still got 35 seconds in the round. Blood coming from the mouth of Natera as well. The more Maldonado can get Natera to stand still, though, the more effective he's going to be. Why don't you just ask him? 
What do you think? <laughs> I don't know that he would do him that favor. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. And this is where Maldonado wants to cut that ring off. Uh, take out the escape route from Mateo. He's doing a good two, job now. Yeah, two good left hands and a slip, a little uppercut in. One slip of four on that as well. Big round for Maldonado. They're in the corner of John Leterre. Fidel Jr. trained by his dad, Fidel Sr. Let's take a look again at the knockdown. And there is started with a sharp left hand to the body. Maldonado follows up. And I'll tell you, aside from that right hook, nothing solid landed to the head that you would think got Maldonado's attention, but it may, that left uppercut did there, but it, may, it might have been that body shot, that first initial body shot that really, really hurt him because Maldonado really dug it in there. Yeah, I think it was, and I think it was just one of those delayed reactions that you see. And those are, shot, those are shots in the bank, you know. It's hard to recover from those body shots. And you don't really ever fully recover from, from them during the fight. You right. may recover partially, but they stay with you. So now round four. And you like to see Maldonado go into the body because Mater is the kind of guy that's going to want to use his legs. You, 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 you tire him down and wear him out physically by grinding him to the body you'll get him to stand still. And if Mateo stands still, he's gonna be a sitting duck for Maldonado's offense. Maldonado just looking to load up. Right to the head and the left behind it. So Mateo's slowing down just a little bit defensively more and more. Yeah. He's not getting out the same way when he flips those jabs out when he flips Another good body shot, sorry, Paul. No, that's, that was it. That was a body shot again. And this is what we talked about. He took it on short notice. One of the body shots. Count of nine. Taking all the rest he can get. Wisely so. So that's two body shots that have dropped Nater. As you said, those punches by themselves stay with you and cumul cumulatively, they can really affect the problem. Yeah, even if you recover from them, you just don't get your legs back the same way. He's kind of trying to fight his way out of there, which is not the smartest thing to do, but he may not have the energy to keep moving. Took a good left hand. And the terror moving through his mouth now. Try to hold there. Maldonado should be getting back to the body here. This is bread and butter for this fight. I, I don't think the chair has a whole lot left. Yeah, a couple of good more, couple more good body shots, and it might be, it might be it for Natera. Let's see if he's trying to survive. He's trying to figure out a way to get out of this round and maybe regroup in the corner. Still a ways to go. He's got 30 seconds to get through round four here. for Matera to come to him. Matera will not oblige. Ties him up. Uppercut misses and triple left hand, good left hand of the head right there. As we come to the end of round number four, we're coming back. At a and W. And the fight while we were away was stopped by the corner of John Matera. They just didn't want any more. They felt their man had taken too much of a punishment already, and he really didn't have left much in the tank. And it speaks probably to those body shots. Yeah, they wore the guy down. We talked about the fact that Matera took the fight on short notice, so we already didn't know how much he would have in the tank if he could go the full 10 rounds at a fast pace. Maldonado made sure to test it out right away by getting to that body early.
And you can see the referee come in and say, that's it, no more. And I believe it was Natera's people who said, no more. So Maldonado gets another victory here. Did what he needed to do against an outmanned opponent. And uh, you gotta start to look at him once again now. Of course, and you know, the last fight he had a guy with Luis Ramos that stood in front of him and kind of tested his manhood, so to speak, his machismo, his willingness to fight. This time he had a, a guy he had to go find. He had to go search for Natera. He had to kind of, got to get him, he had to get him to stand still. He had to figure out a way to slow him down. And he did that. So these are learning kind of fights and, he, and he's doing it and winning against different kind of styles. Absolutely. He's, he'll be 18 and two now and still a ways, I, I would feel away from, from maybe getting into that title contention category. But nonetheless, he's fighting different kinds of guys. I still think that a guy like Stevie Forbes would be a very good fight for him next time. It would. All right, so we'll jump off the track. We'll come back and wrap this evening up. We saw prospects galore, and they all managed to get out of it alive. We're coming back. Meet the boys. All right, thanks very much, Carissa. Back here in San Antonio, things went uh, pretty much as we might have anticipated they would, but we talked about this being a show of prospects. We showed three of them to you tonight, and uh, all three emerged victoriously, and all three will be moving on, and very likely we'll be seen here again. There is Fidel Maldonado. He was the winner of our main event, and Fidel just kind of did what he needed to do in putting away uh, John Natur, who took this fight on short notice and uh, Maldonado quite honestly dominated and he had him down in the third round he had him down in the fourth round both by body punches and he moves on to 18 and 2. Tonight's CompuBox stats are brought to you by throwdownfantasy.com draft fighters track stats and win so Fidel Maldonado and you can see the numbers just bear out how the fight went John Nader was really never able to get untracked after the first round he took that first big body shot in the third round it dropped him he took another one in the fourth round it dropped him he did not answer the bell for the fifth round and that's the way this fight went let's go over to jessica rosales jessica your thoughts on tonight's fights yeah you know it's good to see maldonado smiling in his celebration and here's an idea why not celebrate saint patrick's day with us on fs1 and golden boy live as we have a special saint patty's day edition we head to boston march 17th local favorite danny o'connor will headline against andrew farmer at the house of blues and again it can be seen on march 17th on fs1 all right thanks very much jessica well the crowd here at the cowboy dance hall in san antonio very appreciative of what it saw some home folk coming over from albuquerque to uh, cheer on their man fidel maldonado of course there's a history of great fighters from the state of new mexico and particularly from albuquerque and uh, fidel maldonado jr just hoping to follow in that line the likes of tapia and romero and uh, Holly Holm, a very talented uh, female fighter as well. Let's make an official and Joe Martinez. The end of round number four by request of the red corner. Referee John Shirley puts a halt to the contest for your winner by TKO victory, the Trisco Kid, Fidel Maldonado Jr. So Fidel Maldonado Jr. is the winner, and he does so in rather impressive fashion. A stoppage, unable to answer the bell for the fifth round. That's a wrap for us.